John out. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, is it great to be here today, CFAA? Thank I know you have to be excited, and uh, I'm very excited for you. Um, I am here today representing our superintendent, Dr. Sherry Nichol, um, who apologizes. Another commitment didn't allow her to be here. And also our school board members from Polk County School Board. Um, I, uh, has been mentioned before, um, I oversee the academies uh, in Polk County, our career academies. And uh, they are small learning communities that have a focus. Um, and, and I think that uh, you students certainly exemplify that. You have an interest um, in a particular area, and you can come here and spend your school days focused on that interest. And I think there are so many rewards that come from that. Um, uh, I know that Mr. Smith had mentioned uh, both in the video um, and uh, when he spoke before, but I think it's so important at a time like this that we recognize and thank uh, the many people that made this possible and happen. Um, and one of those was our superintendent, Dr. Nickel, um, our school board that worked with us, but our business partners in our community. Um, Rick Garcia, you heard from him, very instrumental. Uh, John Burton, uh, the president of Sun and Fun, and all of the many members, volunteers and members of the Sun and Fun family. Uh, we thank them so much. Uh, Lakeland Airport. Um, and the FAA Production Studios um, for housing us here and being such great partners. Um, you know, one person can't make this happen. It really does take a village. Um, I don't know of another place in, in the world that the people could come together to make this opportunity a reality for you. Um, for Mr. Ray, for his more than generous gift, um, for our new building out front. Uh, one thing that I would like to um, um, acknowledge and, and invite, I know that we have um, visitors, um, participants in, in this event from all over the, the country and all over the world. Um, and I would certainly um, invite you, um, open arms, um, if you can make the opportunity or have the opportunity, uh, come to Lakeland, Florida. Come during Sun and Fun. If you can't come during Sun and Fun, uh, contact us. You can contact me directly. Um, and we would love to have you come and visit and see what's happening here at CFAA, uh, because I think it's something that's, that's worthy and valid and should be replicated um, any place and anywhere that it can. Um, and especially, I want to thank NASA. Thank you, NASA, for making this a reality. Um, one part, and I don't know that we've touched on it a lot um, here, uh, the academies aren't only um, driving education and curriculum. Um, I think one thing that's very important is we try to allow you to realize your dreams. And thank you, NASA, for inspiring dreams, for inspiring these wonderful young people here and young people all over the world, and thank you for being our partner. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, for a great presentation. Um, next up, let's hear a very special message from Senator Bill Nelson. Thank you to your teachers for inviting me into your classroom. And I want to congratulate each of you on your interest in our country's space program. Uh, Watershed Point was 1961 when President Kennedy said that the fate of America rested in her ability to require the maximum development of every young American's capacity. Now what does that mean? That means that our country's future depends on the maximum development of every young American's capacity. And that means you, and that means your education. <laughs> And without your education, innovation is going to stop, and our country would not be in a position to win this global economic race that we're in. 
I had the privilege of serving with a lot of those people that President Kennedy was first talking about after Alan Shepard and John Glenn flew. I flew on board the Space Shuttle Columbia 25 years ago. We orbited the Earth for six days. I want to show you a model of the Space Shuttle and point out some of the parts of it. What looks like an airplane but has short, stubby wings is called the orbiter. It has what usually is called a tail, known as a vertical stabilizer. It has two engines that are used for deorbiting called Ohm's engines. It has the main engines for liftoff, three, in the tail of the orbiter. But the orbiter is only one part of the overall stack of the space shuttle, for it is stacked vertically to launch on a big apricot-colored external tank that carries the liquid hydrogen and the liquid oxygen that fuels the three main engines in the tail of the orbiter. And the third component of the space shuttle stack are the two big candlesticks, the solid rocket boosters, each of whom carry their own fuel, and it has the consistency of a pencil eraser called solid rocket fuel. And they burn each of them from their nozzles here. Each of these rockets has a, a thrust of about three million pounds of thrust, or six million just from the two solid rocket boosters, and approximately another million pounds of thrust from the three engines in the tail of the orbiter. When the space shuttle lifts off, the count counts down to T minus six, and then the three main engines ignite, and if the computers are checking out that everything is okay, it allows the count to go down to T minus zero, still bolted down to the launch pad, and then at T minus zero, the two big solid rockets ignite and when those babies light off, you definitely know you're going someplace and you just hope that it's straight up. I was seated in what is called the mid-deck. This is the flight deck up here where the commander and the pilot, the flight engineer, is located up here. I was down below what's called the mid-deck where all the lockers are. And right inside that hatch door so that when the solid rockets lit off, I turned my head and looked out that hatch door and I could see us sliding right by the steel of the launch tower. And then as the shuttle made its roll, I was looking south, early morning darkness, 25 years ago, down the coast of Florida. And then it was straight up and accelerating. You know, it's only eight and a half minutes to orbit. Uh, and one of the most dramatic changes in your environment occurs in the last two minutes as you are straining under the, uh, the, the pressure coming in from gravity forces as a result of the space shuttle accelerating to get to orbital velocity, which is uh, 17,500 miles an hour. You're feeling that pressure from the g-forces and then you reach orbital speed. The three main engines in the tail of the orbiter, now separated from all the other components in the stack, the three main engines cut off and instantly you go from straining under g's into zero g and your arms come floating in front of you and all of a sudden you realize you were in space. And indeed, our Capcom back in Houston said, welcome to space, rookies. 
Another rookie on that flight was then Marine Colonel Charlie Bolden, our pilot. Today, Marine General retired Charlie Bolden is the head of NASA. I also flew with another rookie. He was uh, the first Hispanic American to fly in space. Uh, originally born in Costa Rica, Franklin Chang Diaz came to America not speaking any English, worked his way through college, got a PhD from MIT in plasma physics, and he is the first naturalized citizen to become an astronaut. Uh, Franklin in the astronaut office has flown seven times more than anybody else save for one other astronaut named Story Musgrove and he now is building a plasma rocket that will take us to Mars in 39 days instead of the 10 months under conventional technology. This plasma rocket will send us to Mars in 400,000 miles per hour, which you can imagine is much uh, faster than the conventional technology. Now, that's innovation. And I bet you are the very people who will make it possible for humans to continue to venture out to explore our solar system. But it's only going to be like innovating new technologies like Franklin's plasma rocket that we're going to be able to do this and also to sustain human life beyond Earth for long periods of time. Now, if we're going to be successful, we need you to become the engineers, the managers, the factory workers, the accountants, the mechanics, the systems designers. In other words, the educated leaders of tomorrow. And so what we need are more innovators. We need young men and women like yourselves who are highly motivated and who take the trouble to get as much education as you can. We need the innovators who will find new ways to get things done and to serve our fellow citizens. You're the ones who will help bring our country through these tough challenges. And so let's don't ever lose sight of what must come first, and that's your education. But the real deal is that it's up to you. It's been said that an education is not received, rather it is achieved. In other words, it's up to you because each of you have to seek individual excellence. So I want to wish you well as you proceed through this journey, and it will be a lifelong journey, of our education. And I want to thank you for your interest in our space program and all the exciting things that are going to happen in the future. And I can't wait to see what part you're going to play in the future of our country. Thank you and God bless you and God bless our blessed country. Let's hear it for Senator Bill Nelson. What a great and very special message to all of you, and those of you in the classroom I know that are, are viewing as well. I, our next uh, presenter coming up is uh, somebody that I know you're very familiar with, but let's give a very warm welcome to Mr. Gabe Gabriel, NASA contractor, here to speak to you today. Gabe, thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. Well, hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, that was a great speech uh, for those of you like me, I'm sure, are a fan of the space program, to think about being in that shuttle, to be able to lift off and to feel the sensation. Uh, I think any of us would give anything to have that opportunity. I'd like to thank Lori for inviting me back here. I was here about um, five or six months ago. I had an opportunity to speak to all of you, spend time with you, and I really enjoy spending the one-on-one -on -one time. It's great that so many of you remember me and just say, hey, Gabe, I'd like you to call me by my name as I call you by yours. I'm just going to talk a little bit about, you know, right now we have the initiative to um, educate and to do the STEM program, which you've heard a lot about prior to being here. 
when I come around and I talk to you in the schools, we talk about the shuttle, we talk about what the mission was, was to build the International Space Station, that the space station is almost completed. The astronauts are up there now training to live and work in space and to do experiments developing things that can be used on Earth. We talked about going to Mars. We talked a little bit about living on the moon possibly and different things that were available for your future. Uh, one of the things we talked about was dreams and goals. It's so important to have dreams and goals. Uh, next week, we celebrate Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream speech, and that will be, I think, about 47 years ago that he made that speech. So with that, I always want to talk to kids about having dreams and goals. You know, no dream can come true unless you dream it first. It's so important to have dreams, and your goal should be to make those dreams come true. Anything is possible when you believe in yourselves. So when I go around and I talk to you, I like to talk about the space program. I like to talk the excitement about it. But I really want to talk to you about having dreams and goals. And you need to have your goals written down. It's so important if you write your goals down, you have a 70% chance of achieving them. And when you dream, dream big. Don't settle for anything less than the best you think you have. Because when you achieve it, if it wasn't everything you thought you had, you might want to amend it. So make sure you dream high and make it your goal to establish that, and, and it will come true. Most of the astronauts that are on the space station right now, when they were your age, their thoughts were to someday maybe go in space and explore space and to be an astronaut. And now they're living their dreams. I'm sure when you have some questions for them, they'll give you the opportunity. They may talk about that, what it was like to live that dream. So again, I would just like to leave you with that thought to establish your dreams, make it your goal to have those dreams come true, and more than anything else, have fun with your life. Thank you. Before you leave, I have a quick question uh, for Gabe. Um, Gabe, how did you get involved in speaking with schools? Uh, it's a very interesting story. I guess uh, I started working at Kennedy Space Center about 12 years ago, and like many people, it's a dream to work there. It's a fascinating place to work there. And as part of being there, I was able to get posters and send things to schools. And I started sending things to schools. And one school I sent stuff to was in South Africa. It was about four years ago. I was sending stuff to kids in South Africa. And as I talked to you about dreams, I talked to them. And they decided their dream was going to be to come to America. And when I was here, I talked about the kids from South Africa. They were third graders. They came to America. They spent two weeks here. They got the SEAL launch. They loved the space program. And they said to me, hey, Gabe, you know, we came to America. You have to come to South Africa. Well, I never really thought about going to South Africa, but since they asked me, I did. And when I went over there, I was invited by the American Embassy to speak to a bunch of high school kids. And I did. And it was the first time I'd ever done it in my life. I kind of walked out there cold, not a public speaker, have never practiced anything, and talked about the space program for about 30 minutes. And I had so much fun doing it, and I enjoyed doing it so much. When I came back to the States, I said, okay, I'm going to start visiting the schools I've been writing to. And that's how I came here about six months ago. Fantastic, Gabe. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> All right, now let's bring out somebody that I know is near and dear to your heart, and she's been working for months on this program, and she is going to uh, assist uh, with bringing uh, some of you up to ask questions to the International Space Station in a short period of time. So let's bring out Lori Bradner, science teacher Lori Bradner. How are you, sir? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure Thank you to everyone. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. a pleasure to work with you on this program. I tell you what, this is um, absolutely positively a uh, dream come true. Mm -hmm. I want to certainly extend a warm welcome to all of you that are here in the studio audience, as well as to all of you that are watching, um, that are seeing us via the computer, as well as via the television. Um, this is absolutely a dream come true for the Central Florida Aerospace Academy at Kathleen High School, yes, and one is. that has been uh, almost, almost a year in the making, believe it or not, and I can't believe that we're here. Yeah. Lori, earlier today you made a few special uh, um, uh, announcements as far as introductions. Do you have anybody you'd like to introduce right now um, while I, we're live? I certainly would, and uh, some of those that you had mentioned, uh, Cheryl, that you talked to, and I want to say certainly a special thank, uh, thank you to someone, students that we all know that is near and dear to our heart, uh, certainly the heart and soul of our school, and that's Mr. Chad Smith. And we want to say thank you for everything you do for us. Absolutely. Uh, certainly on behalf of Mr. McClellan, uh, I, I could not do it without the administrators uh, and their continued support and encouragement of all that we do students and your crazy science teacher and her crazy ideas. 
I also would like to say, um, certainly on behalf of the Central Florida Aerospace Academy of Kathleen High School, I'd like to send a thank you to uh, Dr. Sherry Nickel, our superintendent of schools, as well as to the Polk County School Board. And just on behalf of uh, certainly not only our school, but all of the workforce academies, we want to thank you for your continued support of all of our, all of, all of our missions, of everything that we do for helping us pump up the rigor for our students. I would also like to say thank you. Uh, we are very honored in the audience to have Dr. Paula Leftwich with us. And Dr. Leftwich, thank you again, as well as John Small, for taking the time out of your schedules to be here today. And we greatly appreciate you. Thank you very much. And, and Cheryl, as you know, this is near and dear to you, your yes, heart. You we much. would be absolutely remiss if we did not thank our media partners, yes. uh, as well as the press, for your continued interest in our school and for taking the time out of your days to be here. We thank you for that. Students, give them a round of applause. Thank you. I have one more to add to that, and that is the staff and crew here at the FAA Absolutely. Production Studios. We've got our control room staff upstairs. We've got uh, Director Obi Young, Technical Director Hugh Hardy. We've got Jim Ging producing the event. And um, as well as all our cameramen, spotlights, everybody here at the production studio. So they're here today for you, and we're very pleased to be able to do so. And I think that um, Mr. Small certainly made a comment that I would like to reiterate. And I would like to say a special thank you. Well, we have the time at this point, and thank you for giving me the time, mm -hmm. uh, certainly to Becky Camus and her team that is in Houston yes. that have made this possible. I want to say a special thank you to Becky just for her willingness to take us by the hand to help us with all of the little details and so that this dream as we've been talking about today could actually become a reality for the students and certainly we want to thank um, Senator Bill Nelson yes. and his willingness although he ple he does send his regrets that he is in session and he cannot be here hopefully he is tuning in live yeah. and he has seen this and we just want to say thank you Senator Nelson for your continued support and we plan to do you proud sir absolutely Fantastic. Yeah. I know you had a very special privilege at Space Camp. Would you like to talk about that a little bit further than what we saw in the video? I absolutely would. Um, uh, certainly not only um, as the Polk County Schools, and I think I can behalf, speak on behalf of uh, Dr. Nickel as well as the school board, we're really trying to pump up the rigor for our students. And with the workforce education, uh, we're trying to make the um, the education of our students relevant. We're trying to make it hands-on. But part of what we're also doing as a county, and I'm very, I'm thrilled to be a teacher in the Polk County Schools, is to help our teachers experience professional development. Because we want to be the role models and the leaders for our students. Well, that means that we've got to get out there and do. That's right. I do have to tell you, I am absolutely not the only one that had to, that had to go through the multi-access trainer and the uh, 4G gravity, um, the, the centrifuge. Um, I actually had a partner in crime, Mr. George Bartuska, who is near and dear to my heart and teaches all of our engineering here at the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. Uh, he is absolutely my space camp buddy. And we had the privilege and joy of going through space camp for educators mm -hmm. in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, it was a program that was professional development that not only helped us bring space and space exploration into our classroom, to bring engineering and hands-on application into our classroom, but also to help us experience a little bit about what the astronauts have to go through. And I will tell you proudly that both Mr. Bartuska, he has his, uh, <laughs> he actually has his flight suit on as well. I believe we earned these, didn't we, Mr. Bartuska? Uh, what was it, 10 or 15 seconds in that multi-axis trainer? <laughs> Absolutely, and that was plenty. Um, so we earned these, and we are proud uh, certainly proud to partner with NASA and, and proud to have been a part of that. As absolutely. you should be. It was, it's a fantastic experience. It's actually a once in a lifetime experience. It is. It is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, if I may, may I tell you a secret? You may. May I share? Yes. I'm very, very excited. Um, when Mr. Bartusk and I came back from the space camp for educators, it was, as you said, it was a chance of a lifetime. Yes. And I thought, you know what, we shouldn't be the only teachers in Polk County because we know we've got the best teachers in Polk County. So we had the brainchild and the brain idea, why don't we bring Space Camp to the teachers and bring it to Polk County? I am very excited to tell you and to share with the teachers as well as the students that this coming summer in July, Space Camp for Educators is actually coming to us. 
and there will be several teachers in the county that will be able to partake. We are partnering with Kennedy Space Center as well as the Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. They are bringing in their faculty members and they will get to have the same experiences that Mr. Bartuska and I did. The beauty is they won't have to leave beautiful Lakeland. You're paving the way. Oh yeah, absolutely. We are. Thank you. Thank, you. Mm -hmm. thank you to Dr. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Lori, where do you get all your excitement and enthusiasm from? <laughs> Well, let's see, I don't do chocolate, I don't do caffeine, because I'd be Tinkerbell if I did. Um, you know what, I tell you what, I, um, I think Senator Nelson said it best. I, I am a lifelong learner, and I thrive on the opportunities to learn and do new things. And I will share this with my students, as you know each and every day in the classroom, to make mistakes, which I do, over and over and over again. But they're not mistakes as long as we learn from them. They become teachable moments, and that's where I get my energy from. And the other thing I have to tell you is, really truthfully, Cheryl, my inspiration and my energy and everything that I do is sitting right out there. There you go. And every that single one of them, and this is why I do what I do, and they inspire me, and I tell them again and again. And so students, to you, thank you. And I appreciate you. our students are also going to have an opportunity to speak to enter a symposium and present their science fair projects to NASA engineers and we're very very excited Josh Gutierrez and Rich, Richard Pazda we are so excited for you and thrilled that you are going to be representing us for that so it's an awesome opportunity that we can call ourselves a NASA Explorer School and just one more way that we're linking that partnership now how soon so, will that project be coming up actually that's this month as well oh, January has been a great month for us hasn't it it's busy <laughs> it's busy absolutely it's been an awesome month how many it of is. you are going to be submitting science projects all of them did actually <laughs> all of them did okay. And I'm proud to say, Excellent. as the, uh, the Regional Science Fair Director, that we are actually taking 22 individuals to regional. Oh, that's fantastic. So, and that includes teams. That's so huge. a majority of our students, and I'm very, very proud yeah. of you guys. Thank you for that. That that's is awesome. That's very huge. Yeah. Absolutely.